Hello, I'm Doug Osnes of the O Team at Keller Williams Realty. Thanks for taking the time to watch this uh, seminar on buying a home. It's especially pertinent for first time home buyers. So without further ado, we'll just jump right into it and get going. After Hurricane Katrina uh, wiped out New Orleans, many of the residents there were asked the following question. Besides love, what's the most important four letter word you identify with in the English language? Now, I've heard somebody answer this uh, question and they thought the word was help, which would have been appropriate with what the people have gone through down there. But obvious and oddly enough, the answer unanimously was home. Home's an important place. It's a place where we love and take care of our family and provide for them. So getting into your own home is a great thing to be able to do. So we want to talk about how you can do that today with this seminar. So we're going to kind of go over a couple of things. We'll talk about a couple of fears and then some facts that uh, you're good to know about buying a home. And then we've got a, an eight-point uh, outline of eight simple steps to successful home ownership. Fear number one that a lot of people have is I can't afford to buy a home right now. Well, the truth of the matter is you can't afford not to buy a home. This is the best buying market in the U.S. in 50 years. Interest rates are at historic lows. Inventory is up. Home affordability is at uh, low as well because there's so much inventory to choose from. It's a great time to buy a home. If there's any way you can get into one, you want to do it now. Another fear that some people have is I don't have the money for the down payment. Well, there are a variety of down payment options that are available, and we'll discuss some of those later. But don't let that stop you. You can get into a home for as little as $1,000 down, believe it or not. Here's the outline, eight steps to home ownership. We're going to talk about deciding to buy, uh, hiring your agent, securing your financing, finding a home, making an offer on that home, performing your due diligence, then going to the closing, which is the fun part. You get to be a homeowner. And then we'll talk a little bit about protecting your investment as well. So let's just jump into these uh, eight areas. Deciding to buy. Uh, the Federal Reserve did a study a few years back, and they looked over a 10-year period, and they looked at the net worth of renters versus homeowners. And these numbers might surprise you. The average net worth after that 10-year period of a renter was just $4,000. The average net worth of a homeowner was $184,400. That's a huge difference. You really want to be an owner, not just a renter, in order to build long-time wealth. A home is the largest financial asset that most people will make due to appreciation and equity over time. Now, the average annual appreciation rate nationally has been 5 to 6% since 1977. Now, the last few years, it's taken a little bit of a hit, but that's a long track record of growth in the housing market. So, at 3% appreciation, a home purchased for $150,000 would grow to be worth $364,000 in a 30-year period. Even at 1.5% annual appreciation, that same home would grow to uh, 234000 in over 30 years. Now, appreciation rates do vary greatly by the local conditions, so it's important to have a good local economist, a realtor, to be able to help you with uh, knowing what those numbers are. So why pay rent when you could own? So if you took a 30-year rate mortgage, fixed rate mortgage, a $150,000 home, and you made monthly payments of $900 a month, you'd pay $324,000 in mortgage and interest payments over the life of the loan. After 30 years, you'd own a home with an appreciated value potential of $364,000 at the 3% appreciation rate. Now remember, appreciation rates do vary greatly. So let's look a little further at this. Compare that to paying $800 a month in rent over 30 years. You'd pay your landlord $288,000 and own nothing. And that's if rent doesn't go up, which it does over a 30 year period. That's a huge difference. That's why you want to be an owner, not a renter. So once you've decided to buy, you need to hire your agent. Well, here's seven main roles that an agent performs. They educate you about the market. They analyze your wants and needs. They guide you to homes that fit your criteria. Uh, they can coordinate the work of other needed professionals, title company, inspectors, etc. cetera. Uh, they negotiate on your behalf. And they review the paperwork and the deadlines of the contract. Biggest thing a realtor might bring to the table though is they solve any problems that arise. This is a huge transaction and you need good help to walk you through the whole process. So once you've uh, gotten an agent that you're working with, you want to secure your financing. Now there's a couple of different things you need to be aware of. You can get a pre-qualification or you can get a pre-approval. Pre-qualification is simply a rough estimate of how much you might be able to borrow. A pre-approval involves a formal application process, you're submitting your paperwork to a lender, and you're getting a formal commitment from them stating how much you can borrow and at what rate. And that's important. That's the best 
position to be in when you go to place a contract with the seller because they know there won't be any questions about your loan. So you want to get pre-approved for a loan when you secure your financing. So six basic steps to get that finance. You need to choose a loan officer or a mortgage specialist. Get somebody who's good, who says uh, they can do it and can do what they say and they get the job done for you. You're going to make a loan application, you're going to get that pre-approval that we just talked about. Then you're going to determine what you want to pay and you're going to select your loan option that you want to use for that purchase. Once you've gone out shopping and you found a house you want to put an offering on, then you submit to the lender an accepted purchase offer contract and they begin to run that through the process. You get an appraisal and a title commitment, a couple other pieces that happen along the way of the contract, but then you can obtain your funding at closing for purchasing that home. A couple things you want to know about, three basic factors in your financing, uh, the down payment, the interest rate, and the term. Down payment is important. The more money you put down, the lower your monthly payment. The average, the, the most used loan nowadays is FHA loan. It's three and a half percent of the purchase price as a down payment. But every state and some cities have some down payment assistance programs that you can apply for where you can get in for as little as $1,000 down. Interest rate, what are you paying on a monthly basis for that, uh, that loan that you've uh, secured? And then term, is it going to be a 30-year fixed loan? Is it going to be a 15-year or 20-year? Those are important elements that, again, affect your monthly payment. So once you've got your financing in place, you can go and find your home. You want to hire an agent. The agent represents you. Here in the state of Colorado, you can hire a buyer's agent. There's a listing agent, selling agent, and a buyer's agent. The buyer's agent is to represent you, to protect your interest, to make sure you get the home for the correct price. They're looking out for your interest in the, in the, the whole transaction. The listing agent is looking out for the seller's best interest. Now, you can also, uh, when you hire this agent, you get all of his services at no cost to you. The seller pays the commission for both realtors in the transaction. So you get protected, you make sure you're paying for the right home, and you get all at zero cost to you. Your agent can help you to define your home criteria, analyze your values, your needs, your wants. Uh, you can consult with your agent to understand the rules of your market. You get a preferred buyer's agent to represent you exclusively. and That's what you want to make sure and have for your protection. Then you go and make an offer. There are three basic components an offer. Price must reflect the true value of the market. Uh, terms, and there's six basic categories that address timing and financial considerations, and then contingencies, sometimes referred to as conditions, that allow you to opt out of a deal if the home has a problem. You're going to put an earnest money deposit down on that home when you put the contract in, and you get some options, you get some, some items through the contract where if it's not meeting your needs, or there's some repair issues that need to be taken care of that aren't, you get your earnest money back, if you have an agent representing you in the process. You also want to perform your due diligence. You'll get to do a property inspection that exposes any structural issues, any things that you need to be aware of that may or may not be working in the deal. You'll also need to get homeowner's insurance policy that protects against loss and damage uh, of the home. And then you get to come to the closing, get to head down towards the finish line. Some pre-closing things that happen, appraisal, a survey, title search, <coughs> title insurance. There's going to be some people working on your behalf to make sure those things are all taken care of. You also want to keep yourself mortgage worthy. Okay, don't go out and buy a new Mercedes Benz two days before closing. Don't even put anything on your credit card. Don't buy that refrigerator. Don't change your credit status at any point until after you've closed on the home. And then you get to do a final walkthrough of the home. Make sure it's in good condition. All the repairs have been done. It's uh, the way it should be. Then the countdown to closing includes getting your settlement statement, some certified funds, you get evidence of insurance, you get a transfer of clear title in the process. And then you are a homeowner. You're going to want to protect that investment. So a couple of things for good home habits. Keep it clean. Perform the routine maintenance on all the uh, fixtures and appliances. And then keep an eye on it. Watch for signs of leaks or, or damage or anything that may be wearing out in the process. Okay? So this is kind of a quick overview of the home buying process. But I want to also just close with this. One of the services that we offer to our clients that we work with is free moving boxes. So you can get packed up and get ready to move a free house cleaner, and free handyman service to take care of those little things in the home that you want to have fixed so they don't bug you all the time. All right? So we would love to talk to you about helping you to get into a home, your first home, your second home, whatever it might be. Again, my name is Doug Austin with Keller Williams Realty, the O-Team, and my phone number is 720-258-8200. Thanks for listening.